hello, hello, and welcome to the Mustard Crave Podcast. Today, we have some special guest hosts today with us. We have Bea, and we have Howland, and of course, we have Michelle. But of course, you don't want to hear me just talk and rant. Well, you, you're probably here to hear me rant, but let's get right into it. This is the post Oscars 2024 podcast. We did a preview podcast episode a couple weeks ago last month, and that was over two hours. We promise we won't go over two hours today. But let's get right into the best picture category and, of course, who won. What defines a best picture film? On our show, we consistently argued that the significance of the Oscars and other awards, including the Academy Awards, stems from their ability to spotlight the most compelling stories of our time. These stories contribute to the legacy and history of human society, showcasing both its flaws and virtues and inspiring growth and improvement within our community. So with that, should Oppenheimer have won Best Picture? Hmm. I mean, as someone who hasn't seen it yet, I should probably abstain from that. Oh, you, you haven't seen Oppenheimer Not yet, yet unfortunately. I had several chances and like it no, just no didn't problem. work out. Oh, okay. I thought I'm I on the same boat. Same okay. boat? Haven't seen Oppenheimer. So no, no problem, no I problem. would stay. <laughs> All right. I will come back to you too. Get ready. I want to hear your best picture pick though for the end of the year based on what you have seen. And going to Michelle, were you happy with Oppenheimer getting the win on that night? I think like it I mean it made sense in the sense of topics that are currently happening in our world like war is such a huge thing I mean it's always been a huge thing but um just the idea of like us being so self-destructive in the things that we're producing um I think that was like a really huge topic and it seems like just like the inner struggle of the main character of like working on this project and creating this, this huge like bomb pretty much. (laughs) Um, It's, it's kind of like, I don't know. I think it's like introspective, even though we personally on individual levels aren't like creating bombs, like we are creating self-destructive paths maybe, or self-destructive um, futures. Yeah. Futures for us or for other people. Or so I think like it was very, I mean, all the films had some kind of level of that, I feel like, but Oppenheimer, it was just like such a big scale that, it made it universal, but also personal at the same time. Got you. So you're, you're okay with it winning because of like what it talked about and the context of today, 2024, 2023 of like hitting the notes about war and the context of war. Okay. I'm going to have to disagree with you. I'm like, I'm happy for Christopher Nolan. I think it's great that he won. A uh, best picture. I'm happy to won best director. I think he was the best director, but I have to disagree with you. I still think it's Killers of the Flower Moon. Like if we're talking about a movie that has the contextual, <laughs> has the contextual. <laughs> See, I haven't, strength. I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, I think so. I'm the only one here that's seen it. But the, uh, I've, like, I've, no, I've Howling, seen you've seen it, it right? Um, I'm going to disagree with you on that yeah. one. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, we'll, we'll get to that disagreement. But like, I really do believe Killers of the Flower Moon because of the the pacing, the the flow, the editing of the movie, the fact that it talked about something like grandiose as like the wiping out of the Native American people and taking of uh, taking of their land, but then hit like on a personal note with like this really destructive and abusive like husband and wife relationship that was in the context. It intertwined both those stories very well. Where with Oppenheimer, like great film, great film. But the the Jay Oppenheimer personal life trying to intertwine with his life as like dr oppenheimer making uh, as the leader of the manhattan project it didn't make like as much sense and it didn't flow as easily in my opinion throughout the movie as like kills of fire moon did hmm. i can't compare it to uh i got you there look i can't compare it to uh oppenheimer because again i haven't seen it but I will admit the uh, the relationship sure. in Killers of the Flower Moon between Leonardo DiCaprio's character and Lily Gladstone's character, it was very compelling in a 
very twisted way, you know, like, uh, um, <laughs> I would say like that is the movie's strength, you know, like uh, this relationship between these two people where one of them is clearly getting into this relationship for very ulterior motives. And you're not sure whether he actually loves this woman or whether he's basically just making himself feel better by convincing himself that he loves her, even though he's just marrying her for her money, essentially. And and then slowly poisoning mm-hmm. her over time. Oh yeah, that <laughs> and poisons her over time. Yeah, of course. Ugh. Yeah. But Bea, what about what about you? What is your what would be your pick in, instead of Oppenheimer? Yeah, I, as I said, I'm very biased towards one specific movie. I knew it wasn't going to win Best Picture, obviously. Um, it was Past Lives. I really loved it. Ah, <laughs> I think I've seen the you. movie like four thank times. You. I have heard that. <laughs> <Wow. movie. laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. And I feel like because um it's I guess it's, you know, it's very it's it's a love story, but also it talks about a lot of um it talks about immigration more than anything. And I think that's why I really loved it just because it's it's I guess it's personal. Um it touches immigration in a way that's not as um what's this? That's not a very in a very subtle way it was a very delicate mm. way of portraying immigration and i think just just talking about the movie i loved how it used romance as a tool to actually um what's this tell the story of a person who's going through immigration and who has to say goodbye to her past you know which is her life in korea because past mm. lives is about you know um, a woman who immigrated from korea to canada and then went to new york to make it and she's now like a uh, playwright i guess in new york i can't remember yeah, what she was she, she but anyway yeah yeah and so i think i loved how they used the the love story like the love triangle to show how um she was trying to oh uh, it's this be at peace with different like with her identity one as someone who is from korea and then another one who is you know in new york trying to live the american dream so yeah i yeah, it was a very beautiful movie, and I think it was shot um, using 35 mm film, and that added to like the nostalgia of it, like the I don't mm. know, it, it had a l- longing, yearning feeling. So yeah, that's why yeah. I loved it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thoughts? You shot on 35 <laughs> millimeter, you said. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, Michelle and I both both watched it. I based on the buzz I was hearing from people, like non Hollywood people, I thought Past Lives was actually going to win, like sneakily win out of nowhere but yeah it didn't get a lot of hype i guess during the hollywood awards cycle but i i think it's a it's a great movie definitely worthy of a a best picture nomination for sure yeah that's what i've been hearing definitely yeah yeah i really want to see it yeah it's on paramount plus with the showtime package Mm. Mm mm-hmm so they have like, cause it's an A24 ah, film, of course. but I, I did want to talk about like that scene in the, I want to say it's a bar with the, with Nora, the wife, and then her, her friend who was her like childhood sweetheart mm. boyfriend. And uh, I mm-hmm. think it's pronounced Hai ha- Sung or her son. And then her, uh, her husband, Arthur. So in that moment, um, I've heard from people uh, in our last podcast say that that's when she should have just left him right there at the bar um what what do you think Bea, about like her commitment to her relationship and michelle feel free to wait wait, wait wait left left her husband there at the bar yeah so like that's the i mean that's oh the tension right that's the tension in the movie where uh... like she has that that final like weep when he leaves right and like she obviously wanted to be with him <clears throat> i was this is i was a... Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah so i was just gonna say that i was contending like that she did the right thing and she she did right by her husband by staying with him and also just it wouldn't have worked out but you know go ahead michelle i want to hear your thoughts on this too but i feel like the movie really established from the get-go from the very beginning that she loved her husband they had a beautiful relationship exactly. um there was this the scene where they were in bed together just talking about um 
what's this? It was it was the best dialogue in the movie. Um, the guy was saying that you make my life so much richer, and I hope I can do the same thing for you. That's not you know the exact way they said it, but that was before the bar scene, and so right. that really established how loving the relationship is, and how you know Nora really chose her husband. That's why when I for me it's a little surprising to hear that people would think that she would leave her husband for mm. her childhood sweetheart. Um, well, but I guess there's that tension between them, but it's more of that you can see how you can also see in her posture that she was just very confident in what she chose, like she what what kind of life she made uh, for herself. So, yeah, Michelle, I, I want to hear your thoughts. I think it's like, I mean, just hearing you guys talk about it, it made me realize that the whole relationship between her husband and um, her high school or her childhood sweetheart was a metaphor for her choosing a life in America versus Korea. So it was like her realizing that, I mean, like obviously she grew up in Korea, so she has like a very special place for Korea in her heart. Um, and that will never really go away. But I think at the end of the movie, when she was crying, but she was like going to um, her husband, it was like her making that final choice at the end. Yeah, she was grieving. That's how how it felt like for me. (laughs) Yeah, she was grieving her life in Korea. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. Exactly. I think there. Wow. And I just wanted to add to that, Michelle. I felt like um, her childhood sweet her childhood sweetheart was her last tie to Korea. And I think it was, they explicitly said it in the movie as well. She mentioned that her mom no, no longer even calls her by her Korean name. Her right. mom calls her by her American name. So her childhood sweetheart is the only person who calls her by her Korean oh, name. Yeah. And losing that connection, that really hit me in the end. Because mm. I, I immigrated from the Philippines, um, went here for grad school, and still trying to make it here that's why that's why i love the movie i guess because it's pretty personal Mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome like do you do you have that same personal i guess tie where people call you from like like a more like filipina name versus your american name oh yeah for sure when i first moved here everybody because i have well um not all filipinos but some filipinos most filipinos have two first names so mine is um yeah. So when I first came here, people called me Anna because that was my first name. But I've never been called Anna ever. So people were like, is it Anna or is it Anna? And I'm like, uh, I don't really care because <laughs> that's not how people call me. So now now that I've been here for a while, I've been just telling people to just call me Bea because that's that's how I was, you know, that's the name that I went by ever since. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then the last part in Past Lives that was really awesome, um, was really great that they touched on from a storytelling standpoint and how they used it with, within the dialogue between uh, Nora and Arthur and then Nora and Hassong was the idea of the Indian. I had never heard that concept before, but the idea that like the reason why we've met in this life is because we have this like 10,000 year history and kind of like in the end, that was also, I, I thought was a, like a deciding factor for Nora is that I'm with Arthur because of our past. Like, cause Sung and I were never meant to be together. Kind of, kind of, kind of deal. If I, if I read that right. Mm. I mean, did anyone else pick, pick up on the Indian or yeah, go ahead. I mean, uh, I haven't seen the movie, but I don't think there's really a right way to read it. If that's what you took from it, then that sounds, you know, like that's what you took from it. So no, true, true. I also, my biggest thing too is a song. Like he he came over to New York from South Korea. Like he like, and it was all raining. He ultimately had feelings for her, but I would have wanted him to be a little bit more direct personally. Like if that had been me, I would have been like, look, like you want to be with me or do you not want to be with me? I'm not playing the Skype game anymore with you. And he just seemed like he didn't have any game. Like he just showed up and he was just like super chill, like like walking around with his backpack and everything, like. Dude, are you trying to sweep her off her feet? Are you trying to make a move? Or like, what are you trying to do? You know, like he was very respectful of the relationship, but I just thought like, since you flew all the way over there, obviously for her, mm. like have a direct conversation and just be I like, I'm it, tired of playing these games with you. 
Yeah, I feel like it was this weird, um, like for him, it was like she's hurt him in the past twice. Like she turned him down twice. And so like for him to really make that move again, it's like she's just going to hurt me all over again. And now it's even more complicated because she's married. So it's like, I don't know, like, would you be super like if you were that hurt from somebody turning you down mm. twice after leading you on, would you want to like really put yourself out there again for that person? Or like, how would you feel about that? I don't know. That could, that could be me, like just not wanting to deal with it anymore. It's like. it's uh, a great question. What do y'all think? <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness <laughs> I don't know what his intentions are that's my question because ever like he's just been searching for her that was the context right he's always like looking for her mm -hmm. but you're right he never really made it clear what he wanted in a way I'm trying to recall oh. yeah like he never stated I... like I want to be with you he just kept making like mm -hmm. inferences to it so Mm -hmm. Again, if it had been me and I flew all the way from there, spent all this money, oh. and also, like, I'm in between this relationship with this one lady who I was, like, supposed to marry, but kind of not marry. Anyways, I, I would have been direct. Like, just been straight up and been like, yo, I want to be with you. Do you want to be with me? Let's work this out. Uh, if not, mm -hmm. then I, I'm going to keep it moving, which is totally cool. I might actually need to see this movie now, because... I'll uh, uh, uh like um yeah uh, like long story short out of high school i moved three thousand miles for a girl so uh <laughs> i might need i might need to Whoa. see this movie now yeah <laughs> yeah i would like to hear your perspective on that helen because you we talked about your story uh on the discord server yeah before, so okay well um yeah <laughs> yeah Right. It doesn't have to be here. I'm like, it, now yeah, we're going to hear it. I'm just hearing this and I'm just yeah. like, oh, wow, that sounds very familiar. <laughs> very uh, relatable. <laughs> yeah. Now you, now you have to see now the movie. I yes, I, I'm putting it on my list. I mean, it's already on my list, but now it's <laughs> like going up a few notches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, to me past lives is definitely in the t like the top three for like actually winning in my personal opinion like it's barbie for me um then it's uh then i would say past lives and then third no sorry i'm sorry it's close of flower moon then then barbie then past lives like it's definitely top three and i think it should have got more love but moving on to best animated feature film the question is should he, uh, sorry, Hayao Miyazaki. Told him, I don't know why I messed up his name. The Boy and the Heron. That was the winner. And it was like the clear winner from like a, like for a mile. But do y'all think that should have been the winner for Best Animated Feature Film? The other uh, nominees were Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams, which I don't think anyone's seen. So I don't even think it should have been nominated just based on that. That's just my personal opinion. If, if, you, if you're not available for people to watch, you should not be mm -hmm. nominated. But that's just me. Uh, and then Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which should have been the clear winner. Yeah. I hate agree. I hate agreeing with that because you know, like, it's ultimately a sequel with a cliffhanger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, much love yeah. to Miyazaki, but I just did not connect to the Boy and the Heron. I wanted to love it, and I wanted to appreciate it. Yeah, but... me too. The longer the story kept going, the more I'd say confused I was, because I was just like, okay, yeah. like so this is very Alice in Wonderland kind of, but um, I don't understand anything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the plot really didn't connect to the main character's struggle. Yeah, and then especially when you get to that third act. Now I've heard some good explanations post, like you know post watching it from other like other people who watched it that the whole like tower falling was supposed to be and then the grand uncle was supposed to be like significant of like the fact that you have to make a choice as to whether you're going to accept your new mom or your new life and if not you're going to like have like a wobbling kind of falling apart life that was like the basic explanation i heard from someone I was like guess. yeah that makes more sense in hindsight 2020 
But if I can't, if I come out of a movie theater and I'm confused, <laughs> you know, I don't think that's. And a lot of people were like upset by this movie. So like, it wasn't mm. just me and Howland and it's like some random. I wouldn't people say I was there. upset, like, because it's a, it's honestly a gorgeous movie. It's got like lovely animation in it. It's got yeah, the music is great, the acting is great, and so on and so forth. It's just. I like I think I was I was down with the first maybe 10 20 minutes or so uh but then it just like started getting more and more confusing and I didn't understand what was happening yeah. and not going to lie like you know um I feel like the main character could have like I don't know they could have established him a little bit more because for the first I'd say 10 minutes of the movie he was very quiet but I get why he was quiet but I don't know. I'm rambling. Yeah. But also, like, in the middle of the film, it seemed like he didn't have a lot of agency. Um, like, he was being, like, like grabbed around to, like, go around the, the, the different parts of the the new world it, that he was in. It just seemed like... You know, yeah. He was kind of being babysat. Like, kind of like those, like those video game quests where you have to, like, oh walk a character and protect them from one point to another <laughs> point. That's... Honestly, that's what it felt like to me. It didn't seem like... The main character had a lot of agency there. Mm-hmm. But Bay, seeing you, you had something to say? No, it just—I mean, I, at first I was curious to see the, this movie, but now that you're describing it to me, maybe I shouldn't really watch it. it might not be a good use of my time. Well, um, I, 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 still I still think it's, think it's good. a good use like of your time it's... because it's, it's 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 yeah. But I wouldn't I wouldn't spend money on it. Like <laughs> if it was in the theater and there was like pay twenty bucks to go see it. I personally would not go and pay 20 mm-hmm. bucks to see it again because mm-hmm. I saw it twice mm-hmm. just to make sure like mm-hmm. I knew what I was talking about. Uh, yeah, like the the one th- I th- I'd say the biggest p- point of confusion for me was the parakeets. I'm s- <laughs> the parakeets were so the, scary. They, man. they were so random and I'm just wait parakeets those are our villains i am what why who is this parakeet king and why is there <laughs> yeah like it was it was it just, it just felt <laughs> that's right the parakeet it felt king. so random and out of nowhere that i just i didn't know what to make of it mm-hmm. i guess um what also makes a good movie is clarity you know like if you feel if you leave the movie theater feeling confused, I mean, did the creators really, were they really effective in telling the story or making mm. you feel something? What was their intention behind the movie? What did they want the audience to feel? Or like, what did they, did they want the audience to take away from it? So if it lacks that clarity, I guess then, yeah. Oh well, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> completely because, agree, uh... completely agree. That will, that's something. Oh no, yeah. yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, no, yeah, go ahead. like I, I definitely agree with that because you want to be clear with your audience. There are times where ambiguity can work, but if like most of the movie is too ambiguous, then I don't know. Like it just, yeah, audiences like clarity. Mm-hmm. Ambiguity can work if it's intentional, and then they were able to deliver it effectively. Because like like cliffhangers right you're like oh you're left thinking about the movie after and so you dwell mm. on it but yeah anyway anyway no very good point, i was just thinking about points. poor things yes um, because i just saw it last night oh, yeah. i was like oh, hmm. oh. <laughs> you, yes you wanna, that's you, why let's uh let's finish up best feature animation let's jump into four themes because I, I know a lot of you also thought that would win best uh feature. yeah but uh michelle did you have any more thoughts to add to the boy and the heron um, I mean, I just agree with everything everyone was saying. Like, I feel like, especially just having the idea of like, you should leave a movie feeling something. I think confusion is a bad thing to feel after a movie. Like, unless it's like, it's just so thought provoking, but it wasn't like so thought provoking that you were thinking like so deeply about it. It was like, wait, what happened? And, yeah. So, and then I feel like they just tied in 
everything that they were missing to like the last couple seconds when he was leaving it's like oh yeah this is your mom and like it's like just throwing <laughs> that stuff in at the very end of the movie like what like why did you just throw that in why wasn't that like sprinkled in throughout because it would have made more sense throughout the i would whole actually thing, make but... an argument um yeah. that uh, you know like it's funny because uh across the spider-verse definitely ended with a cliffhanger and i still think it was more of a closed loop story than the boy and the heron was because you know like yes. e- even though yes, it's sir. like okay you don't yes, know what's going to happen next with miles and such but the story itself like across the spider-verse is basically it's gwen's story in a way like she has a character arc from beginning to end it is very well done and it is just oh <laughs> that, that movie just gives me chills anytime i think of it it was just so impactful it was really amazing it was really amazing um also in best feature, uh, best animated feature film was Elemental. I'm so glad that movie got a nomination because the movie got a lot of hate. Yeah. And to be honest, I was part of that hate train um, because the trailer did not convince me of anything. But when I actually watched the movie, I loved it. So I was really glad to see it get nominated. Nimona to me is still the film that I know a lot of people like and a lot of people on the internet will probably be mad at me for saying this. But I don't believe it was the best animated feature film nominee in my. I don't think it was, but I really appreciated Nimona because, like, um, the thing is, it took a story that I've seen so many times. It's like, oh yeah, here's the character who, like, you know, he's uh, on top of the world and he uh, gets brought down and he has to partner up with this other character who's an outcast from society, and uh, they have to, like, you know, the one guy has to get his, I guess, position back, but. Uh, like yeah. that. The thing that I appreciated about Nomona was it took a story that I'm familiar with, and it basically got all the usual tropes that I've seen before out of the way in like the first thirty minutes, and then when uh, after that point I was like, wait, this is usually the point where the movie is almost ending, and we still got an hour left to go. I don't know what's happening after this, so I really appreciated that about it. Yeah, I will say like the third act, I really appreciate mm-hmm. as well. Just like the final battle sequence and like Nimona, because of her story and what she was going through, like the fact that she had the suicidal ideation yeah. and then it was Ballister who came and stopped her from killing herself. Like that was super powerful. And just that That's... moment where he put his hand on her chest and stopped her from, from destroying herself, I was like... That hit me. That also, hit me kudos right. to the voice actress behind Nimona because, oh my god, that it was some good voice acting. Like, she just brought a lot of personality. Yeah, there's a lot of different... Yeah, a lot of different personality to it, for sure. No, most definitely. Okay, so again, Robot Dreams, I really think should be off this list because, again, I don't, I haven't met anyone who's actually I watched it. And it still want to see it, but I haven't seen it. To buy or even to stream. Yeah, no, I the... agree. So... I just want to add like one movie here to this to this category that I think should be on the nominee list for best anime anime feature and it was overlooked because it's Adam Sandler. I want to add the movie. Oh, Leo. it was on oh. Netflix. Have you seen it? Have you seen it though? <laughs> Have you seen it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if you seen it, you know you know the truth, Michelle. Back me up here. It was a great really? film. <laughs> I I really and en- I really enjoyed. It. Did you actually? I, I see haven't it, though, seen it, but I saw the trailer this... for it, and I was just like, okay, I remember Eight Crazy Nights, and I don't want to feel that pain again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's better than Eight Crazy Nights. Okay. I think so. Yeah. I'll get. I'll give it a watch. Yeah. Also on Netflix. So, <laughs> Netflix and Nimona are on. I'm oh, sorry, Nimona and Leo are on Netflix. But Leo is really, really good. It's I'll give really it a good. Watch. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like if it wasn't for Across the Spider Verse, I would say that's that, oh. that is the best animated feature film. Actually, speaking of like one movie that I think got overlooked was the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I would oh. have to completely disagree with you. It did not get overlooked because it was a clone of Spider Verse, and it was under- oh come on. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it was. When it was say, fun. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. When you say a clone, with 
what, I mean, in what the sense? animation was similar, the animation but, style. you know, like, still, the rest of it was good. <laughs> no, it was, it was good. Like, it was solid, but it was the typical, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja... It was almost a typical Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles origin story all oh. over again. I'm tired of hearing the story. I know about the goo. I know about, <clears> like, <throat> a Master Shredder. I understand that they have to fight over the fact that people don't like them. They think they're freaks in the city. I get that. I'm tired of seeing that story. I want to, <laughs> like, they, they hinted at Shredder at the end of the, of the movie. They should have just gone in with Shredder at the very beginning. Mm. Like, I don't need an extra, like, origin story. I thought the, the voice actors did a great job. Um, it was fun. Yeah. But it just felt like, it felt like, why, why did they make this? This is, like, not bringing anything hey. new. So... <laughs> Yeah, but I'm I'm glad you brought it up though, because that a lot of people have forgotten about that movie. Yeah, well, you brought up Leo, so. All right, so going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Leo's right. good. Don't all sleep right. on Leo, right. people. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, let's let's uh, let's talk about poor things for a quick second here. Um, this is a movie that we've all seen, and uh, mm -hmm. Bea, how would you kick it off for us? Because you just most re recently saw it. Oh my goodness. Um... <laughs> I would have a, I would have to ask somebody else to start this conversation. Um, okay. <laughs> um, anyone else I'll, want to I'll, I'll start off then. Uh, of the three that I've watched, Barbie, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Poor Things, I think Poor Things was the better movie. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to agree with that. I know. <laughs> no, no. And we've talked about this on the server. I just like, it, I, I see why I was nominated. I see why I was nominated. But it's just so grotesque in how it 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 went through its plot. Um, I understand the, the the character and like like what Bella was doing. Um, I like her as a character. I like her journey, but it was just so ooh, like it was raw. Like we're in Michelle and I were in the movie theater, and just like oh. Oh, you know, it's just like, like covering just, each other's eyes, and it was like it was the whole theater, and we're all kind of just sitting there watching it together, and it just it felt awkward. Like, it felt uh, like so we're all just sitting there watching. It's it's like it's like that thing where like you're watching an R-rated movie, uh, like next to your mom on the couch, and then a sex scene comes on, and you're just like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I, that's, that's what it felt like. But it was like I live for that uncomfortability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was just like constant like usually in r-rated movies you get like one maybe two of those scenes it was just like like a good solid 30 minutes of that stuff <laughs> and it it was like like laced throughout the movie in certain in certain segments and it was just like whew, like it was just a lot and the first 15 minutes also got me because it was just so like uh gory as well with the stabbing, oh yeah, and there was a stabbing. Yeah. Was but a stabbing. again, it's a solid movie. It's a best. It's a best picture nominated movie. Like I totally agree with that. I love Bella's arc. Um, Michelle had a great soliloquy in the in the, the last podcast about how it's actually the mature version of Barbie. Um, so I don't know yeah. if you want to. I very much agree. Yes, yes, I was about to say that, but yeah, keep going. Oh no, no, I'm done. I'm done. Everyone else speak. No, I agree, Michelle. I, that was my thought after watching it last night. It's the same story. It's the same. Um, uh, uh, I don't want to be hated for this, but I feel like the plot or what they were trying to convey was not very original. It was just told in a very, the storytelling True. was different, but it told the same story about um, what it means to be, I guess, a woman. Um but in a way, I, that's why I love Barbie more <laughs> than Poor Things, yeah. um, just because, you know, the way it was portrayed. But anyway, um, uh, how do I say this? Poor Things was a very beautiful movie. I lived for the costumes and the dresses. It was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I loved how they shot it in fisheye. That, actually, that was my question. If you have any thoughts on it, like, why are there some random moments where it was, like, through... Fish I'd say a lot of that was a vignette. I don't know what the exact room well, for that was. Lens, and I'd say a lot of that was like so. The director, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try. Basically, um, with it's like Arturo, right? Uh, something like that. I forget. 
Uh, but po- the point is, like, you know, yeah. like my previous movie that I watched from him, it was called The Favorite. And uh, he really likes weird camera angles. Like, that's kind of his thing. Now, it does. I don't think it gets too annoying like mm. uh, a movie like if anyone's ever seen the movie Battlefield Earth with all the Dutch angles everywhere. Um, that movie is infamous for all the camera. I think I. Oh no! Sorry, go keep going. I was just saying. I think I yeah, uh, that basically that movie has like a Dutch mm-hmm. angle for every single frame, and I remember critics hated it at the time. But here comes a movie with fisheye lenses and Dutch angles and a distorted perspective everywhere, and the critics just gobble it up. Um, I think the di- I think the yeah. difference between that and here is there's a lot more. I'd say, I don't know, intention behind the uh, angles because. Uh, the entire world is intentionally bizarre. You got you got a guy who who burps bubbles. Yeah, <laughs> he was and awesome. you have a like a a half chicken, half dog, whatever or whatever it was hybrid, and you just have all these weird these weird yeah. elements <laughs> in the movie that, in a way, the weird camera angles kind of work for it. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I also love the color correction for Poor Things as well. That was mm-hmm. really, really well done. Yeah, my sister added that it felt like um, she was watching like an old Dolly movie. Salvador actually, Dali. yes. Oh, wow. that, it reminded that, her that of that. That actually does sound correct, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I never thought about that at yeah, all. Yeah, actually, rec- I want to. Okay, I want to put it to this group. No, I did recently visit the Dolly Museum and one of the Dolly Museums in Spain, and it was like I can definitely see how you'd come out of like that conclusion. There wasn't there like um there was a building that was what was the guy's name? Uh 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 Sagrada Familia. Yes, Sagrada. Yeah, that's uh Sagrada Familia. That's in Barcelona or Barcelona, as we call it. Yep. yeah, I think there was a building in there that is pretty reminiscent of Gaudi. Is it Gaudi? Yeah, Gaudi. It was, oh my goodness. It was, it was I'm Gaudi. Saying this in a podcast if I'm not even sure of the name. Yeah. 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 But I love the aesthetic. I really love how pretty it was. I love yeah. the big puffy sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> no, completely agree. Completely agree. I was gonna, I was gonna ask this group because I asked the last group on our previous podcast episode. I, you mentioned that it wasn't doing anything new from a plotting standpoint Mm. and i mean that's kind of true for like pretty much every movie because like you know there's really no new story oh yeah really it's just Mm. a lot of like twists on things but i was liking the the story to a a weird telling or weird version of the prodigal son Mm. parable from the bible where i would say bella is the prodigal son godwin is actually is god like they actually call him god like that's her creator yeah um and then the the brother older brother who stays behind is like her betrothed who kind of stays behind and stays with the father um all the way to the end obviously not the exact same story but she does ultimately come back for a different reason but she comes back and like settles back in to the estate kind of thing so i was just kind of interested when i was thinking about that is like wow that's a cool way to take something that's like a lot of people know and familiar and are familiar with, but kind of flip it on its head a little bit. So I, I, I thought from a plotting standpoint, four things did a great job. And I also loved when she came back and found her like, or her original husband came back and found her. And then we realized like, this is why she killed herself at the beginning of the movie. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. All right. Very cool. Michelle, you have any thoughts? <laughs> I'm keeping myself from saying anything. Yeah. Anyway. I think, yeah. Just like to wrap up for things. Um, it was very whimsical and graphic and disturbing in some ways. And I feel like that's a great representation of being a woman. Like the things that women go through at the hands of other people is very disturbing and it 
um, it can be beautiful at times and like learning who you are is a beautiful thing, but also it's very horrifying and the things that you have to go through to just get to where you want to be sometimes is compromising and it's ugly and mm. um, yeah, I, th I just think it was like a great, it was like a very full picture, not leaving anything out of like the experience of a lot of women. So, yeah. Beautifully said, Michelle. I couldn't have said it any better. Yes, you articulated what I was thinking beautifully. Awesome, awesome. All right, we don't have much more time. So I, I do want to just hit on this topic because it it was kind of a, a hot topic when I was watching threads, um, the threads posts coming about the, the Oscars. Oh. So for Best Actress, there were a lot of people who were nominated. Um but the two that were like the main ones were Emma Stone for Poor Things, of course, and then Lily Gladstone for, I don't know why I'm forgetting this movie's name, Killers of Flower Moon, right? And so Lily had already won for dramatic, uh, best, best actress for, um, for best feature drama at the Golden Globes, and she won at the SAG Awards. So like the, essentially the kind of trend is that if you win both of those, you essentially like most of Hollywood has already voted. The actors have voted yeah. and the press have voted. So there's like, makes a big con like group of the Academy. So it makes sense just from a number standpoint that you would win in the Oscars category. And it's supposed to be a big night for her, like in the sense that it would be the first win for a native American at I think at all at the Oscars. And since the tepid pass of, you know, Native Americans at the Oscars and in Hollywood has been, you know, not good. That's the best way I can say it right now. My mind's blanking on okay. the words. So Emma Stone definitely like deserved to win. So I'm not saying she didn't deserve to win. She she did an amazing job in poor things. But I think the subtlety of Lily Gladstone's performance is being overlooked because of Emma Stone's like poor things performance was just so like like oh like over the top like everything was just like a beat everything was like a note like it was just huge and like in your face whereas Lily Gladstone's performance was very subtle and uh, very minuscule but you believed her from the very moment that she stepped on screen mm -hmm. so I wanted to put that out there do y'all think she was snubbed for not winning uh, at the Oscars yes and no like <laughs> uh so you you ever see yeah. those uh, so occasionally it happens every once in a blue moon where the Oscars like, you know, have uh, nominees where multiple nominees are really, really good and they're competing against each other, essentially. And figuring out who was yeah. better is kind of like, you know, like calling the race by um, a hair. Essentially. Right. So right. Uh, I think both Emma Stone and Lily Gad Gladstone were really, really good at what they were doing, and uh, like the the uh, the idea that one like you know was like, of course you can't give two women Best Actress Oscars, uh, like it can't be a tie. There has to be one. So, right. Uh, uh, that that's a hard one for me because Lily Gladstone was really good and Emma Stone was also really good. Yeah, I think also this is where I would say because I, I believe Emma that was her second win, so I would say maybe give it to Lily because Emma had already won one. Um, that's just again that's no, just no, me. No, I, I, uh, that's just me. But no, I hear that argument with uh with, uh, with wins <laughs> and nominees before, where like you know uh so it's like oh this person's got three nominations or this person's got four wins or whatever and such. And therefore, like, the new award should go to, like, someone new that doesn't already have awards. I uh, I don't know how I feel about that, but that's also me putting out, like, yeah. what the Oscars were originally intended for, which was to essentially control filmmakers, so. Yeah, I mean, that's true, too. I think it's just, you. we need to see new talent, right, yeah. all the time. Right, not that Emma Stone's old, but it's just that like we need to con consistently need to see new talent rise. And one way is to get awarded at the Oscars, so you can get more yeah. work. Um, so again, Emma Stone totally deserved it. Not hating on her, she did a wonderful job. Michelle, what, what were your thoughts uh, on that win for Emma Stone? Because I was I was shocked when I watched it. I was so shocked. I mean, 
she went through a lot <laughs> in that filming process. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. And then she did she she kind of also produced the yeah, film. Yeah, she was a producer. She? So I don't I like oh, okay. Yeah, so it was yeah. like her similar to Barbie, Margot Robbie was also the producer on that, but yeah, I mean like I mean I haven't seen Killers of the Flower Moon, so I can't have a full opinion, but I think just everything she had to go through to film that movie was like that's worth an award to me no for sure for sure she put the movie on her back like mm -hmm. you know the movie doesn't happen without her so i, mm -hmm. I hear that argument mm -hmm. yeah I, I i feel the same way i feel like she had a lot i mean i again i haven't seen killers of the flower moon but i feel like she had a lot of material i mean and also the movie was about her character right true. That's true. so yeah she really had a lot of material um so to i guess establish yeah. that yeah, super good point. Love to keep talking about it. We just wanted to, to touch on it just a little bit because it was it was hot gas that night. <laughs> and so um, next question here. Was Am Just Ken the best performance of the night for the Oscars? It's an easy question. It's an easy question. Yes. I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just proved that Barbie, Barbie, you know, was such a great film. But go, go ahead, Alan. I think we lost him. Okay. But yeah, it just it just proved to me it was just amazing, such an amazing film, such like great costume design, such great mm -hmm. character work done by Margot and by Ryan Gosling. Is that his name? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just a shame that Margot didn't get a nomination for an best actress. Again, just my personal opinion. Should should have been mm -hmm. there. Um and also that Greta Gerwig didn't get a nomination for Best Director. And that leads me into the next topic because Jonathan Glazer for oh boy <laughs> what's that movie called <laughs> zone of interest jonathan glazer for the zone of interest got nominated and he also got nominated for like screenplay and everything and i just want to read a little bit from the top of the screenplay it, it the first line says black i mean i should tell you everything you need to know about that movie it's a black screen a musical overture begins inviting descending and then it literally says in the the screenplay Gradually, the white letters fade as they cool, leaving us in blackness again as the music plays in descending patterns for several minutes. Not a couple, not one, but several minutes. And that is true. Like, watching that film, it was a, just a black screen with music blaring at you. And we were in the theater with other people, and, like, other people started talking. I almost checked my phone. I turned to Michelle, like, are we actually in a movie, or what's, what's going what's gonna to happen? <laughs> so... I, I I think it was complete like complete disrespect for your audience for doing that, and I don't think you should have been nominated for best director, especially when Greta Greta you know dropped Barbie. She should have got that nomination instead of uh, actually the one controversy that I definitely uh, completely agree with. I do not understand why Barbie was nominated for best adapted screenplay when it is clearly an original screenplay. Clearly an original, yeah. Mm -hmm. Clearly like it's, original. Is, is it because I Barbie is an IP, mm -hmm. which I'm like, okay, well, Toy Story was nominated for Best Original Screenplay, and it has plenty of IP in it, Mr. Potato Head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. I think there's been a lot of, again, being here in Hollywood, there's been a lot of trepidation to give Barbie its due, and I think because of the brand recognition, because people think it's like an easier movie to make, and I just think when you're working with brands and IP that are well established and you do something that you didn't, it wasn't poor things, but you flipped it on its head. You made fun of the corporation Mattel right in the movie for everyone to see. for the Which whole world to see. And you made over a billion dollars. Like you got to give that movie some love, you know, and it got love because of the category, the new category in the Oscars where if you make the most money, you get an award. So it got that love, but like at least get a best picture, best director nomination for Greta. It just, I'm just, yeah. she, I'm just shocked that Mattel signed off on a movie where uh, Barbie literally, co literally <laughs> complains about fascism. <laughs> yeah, and a great way of doing it too. It actually explained socialism, uh, or fascism. Not, uh, no fascism. I don't control no, 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 the railways communism. or the flow of commerce. Yes, fascism, yes. <laughs> yes. There you go. That's perfect. That's perfect. But Bea, this this is one of your favorite movies of the of the year as well. So, what what are your thoughts on Barbie and where it landed as far as nominations? Oh my goodness, I'm not sure if I can say like, well, it was it was a good movie. I loved it. It was um, 
it was a perfect summer movie. That's how I would say it. Yeah. Um, and it, it did get a lot of publicity. I mean, rightfully so. Um, I love how, yeah, you said like it flipped it on his head. Like it's, it's a different way of telling a story. Um, and, you know, Barbie redis- rediscovering like who she was and, you know, finding her identity. I loved all of that. Um, I, uh, we talked about this, Jesus, right? Yeah, this is yeah, why yeah. I'm, I'm here too. Yes. Is I felt like Barbie was a great movie, but that it could have trusted its audience more. Oh. Um, in terms of, you know, there was a, a narrator in the story. They, and I love how they would, you know, insert all of that. There was one, there was one time when Margot Robbie didn't have makeup on and then they were saying how, you know, you know that Margot Robbie is not the perfect what's this, um, actress Barbie. to say that, you know, she wasn't beautiful or something like that. Yeah. 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 And um, what was I trying to say? Yeah. I felt like it could have trusted its audience more because I feel like it was defining things during precious moments when the audience could have just, you know, just reflected on it, on it mm-hmm. by themselves. I mean, wow. you can, you can trust the people. They would understand. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how I felt, but it was a good movie overall. I've never heard that criticism, and I think that's very fair. I I do think the use of a narrator was a little weird when I first heard it. It was cool, but it did feel like a lot of, a lot on the nose in certain moments. Completely agree. Well, to be honest, like that itself, in a way, like uh, it's kind of a parody of um, uh, if anyone's seen like a bunch of like you know uh, adaptations recently where whether it's like tom and jerry or uh, the uh, smurfs movie or ella enchanted and so on and so forth where a character goes from a fantasy world and goes through a portal to the real world um the, those ten those tend to have yeah. narrators <laughs> yeah obviously i think that's where you know, if you're looking to get more Hollywood recognition, I think that's where criticism comes in because people look at those movies as like, oh, okay, those are like kids' movies. Mm. Um, they need a narrator mm-hmm. to explain things mm-hmm. to the audience, kind of thing. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's true. It still got a Best Picture nomination, but it, that maybe, maybe that hurt it a little bit, maybe in some of the other categories. Mm-hmm. And I think like it, it also works. I mean, it, it works within the movie. It doesn't feel like it's it's um it's out of place. Like it's a little cheeky, you know. That's how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes like there, I I'm trying to find like a specific section where I felt that way. But I sometimes I feel like it's too much in your face. Like a lot of things uh, are in your too face. Self referential. You can just pull back a little bit and give it to. Yes, 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 yes. It's mm-hmm. very self aware. So you can be a self aware movie without having to explicitly say that you're I'm self-aware I don't know <laughs> that's just how that's just how it felt for me in some moments not not no, all of fair. it yeah no 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 I, I agree with that that's very fair Michelle did you have any more thoughts from a screenplay perspective um I mean I think everyone covered it <laughs> I don't really have anything to add for sure for sure but yeah I think like the discussion with Barbie even though it didn't get a lot of like a, like wins or a lot of nominations, I think it's going to be a film that's going to be discussed for like a very oh, long time. Oh yeah, made over two right? billion dollars because didn't of it? the impact it has. Did it get to two oh, billion? Uh, wait, I thought it got to. We don't have to fact check oh, that. Okay. We're just saying. I believe you. I believe. You. I believe you. I just that's wow. That's amazing. But I think just like what you can do with a brand and what you can do when it comes to recognizing women and diverse talent as well in the, in the industry. And then also from behind the camera standpoint, having a talent like Margot Robbie produce, you know, find, <clears throat> she found Greta, she, she got the script together. Um, you know, she brought the whole team together. She brought the whole production together. I just think just an amazing feat. And if it wasn't for Barbie, I don't think Oppenheimer would have had financial success either in my opinion, because the whole barber oh yeah that thing was you know marketing campaign that was bonkers yeah kind of a brilliant marketing campaign too it's like uh cool. hey like here's a uh, barbie and uh here's uh this basically here's this bright pink movie with a woman as the lead character being released the same day as this really dark gritty movie with a guy <laughs> yeah the contrast, contrast like it's mm-hmm. definitely yeah. awesome just no definitely awesome contrast all right we'll wrap it up here with one last question and this is kind of like a fun question for the group 
what are your anticipated movies for 2024? Ooh. I'm actually really looking forward to The Challengers. I haven't heard of that one. What's The Challengers? Uh, it's basically Zendaya, and uh, she has this... Uh, basically yeah she's oh, she's yeah she's a tennis player. player and she's got these two guys like it's a love triangle well i don't know about a love triangle it looks a little raunchier than that basically she's got these two guys that really want her yeah. and they're all tennis players and i guess it turns into a really tense love triangle and it just it just looks good like so i'm anticipating that yeah the the drama looks looks very spicy yeah. it was supposed to be released last year but for some reason they delayed it I'm... anyway uh, continue yeah oh yeah yeah um i'm looking forward to wicked mm -hmm. and inside out too i think those are my two i'm really hoping wicked is as amazing as it was on mm. broadway but i mean it looks it's a really challenge. good based on the trailer yeah, but it, it could also be bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's great. I'm hoping for the best. I, mean, I think it's got... Yeah, Ariana Grande... I, I wouldn't know if I want to trust Ariana Grande with that role, in my opinion, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to, too. But I love, love, love the musical. So that's why when I finally go see it in the movie theaters, I'm just going to take a step back and enjoy it because I feel like it's hard to when you already have a reference. So they have big shoes to fill for sure. That's true. I hope it's also successful because of the, the book trilogy. Mm, yeah. Um, there's a, there's more story past the first, the first story. So I hope it is financially successful so they can make more of those movies. And uh, I will say for my pick for most anticipated movie of the year is civil. War. Oh, it's coming out in a couple weeks. Oh. I not try to dabble no. on things, but I mean I'm trying to see I try to see and maybe do a little prepping if you know what I'm saying. But anyways, <laughs> we don't have to get we don't have to get into it, but No, I I, I I can see why people are anticipating some awards being heavily marketed. I just oh man, I I'm I'll I'll just put it this way, I'm not a fan of the premise. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm definitely not a fan of the premise either. It's just it it's crazy that we had to even think about this in twenty twenty four. Yeah. You know. Let the eighteen hundreds die. You know? Oh <laughs> we don't need to well, revisit those those. Oh movies. well I don't mean like that as far as the premise. It's more so the uh the world building sounds a little lazy. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll have to get we'll, okay, we'll have, have to get, get into that. that. We'll have to get into that some other time. Yeah. Awesome. Well I want to thank everybody for being here on the Mustard Great Podcast episode 149 we're one episode away from 150 so so yeah thank you everybody for listening thank you for the loyal fans but again thank you to our guest hosts for today bea and Hallen. we really, really appreciate you so much thank you very very much for jumping on the podcast with us today and of course thank you to our host our longtime host as well michelle <laughs> we really appreciate you <laughs> awesome well that's all the time we have for now our next episode will be about the chosen season four so if you want to listen and uh, subscribe for that. We'll be talking about Chosen Season 4. Anyways, take care and stay musty. <laughs>